You ready? I'm ready. All right. You gonna say something to the people? Welcome back, y'all. Hey, it's time for us to go ahead and do our thing, which is, what do we call this show? We gonna figure it out. We gonna figure it out. Why do we call it that? Because married life is a day-to-day... -day... Is, is a day-to-day -day what? <laughs> now, I gotta do this. That's why I was hoping you would do <laughs> A struggle <laughs> or sorry. a day-to-day -day, um, decision um, takes effort, so we gotta figure it out day to day. All right. So on today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about a whole bunch of different hey, things. Leah, David, Brandon. We're going to talk about blended families. That's going to be our biggest thing because we have a blended family, which yes, kind of means do. if you haven't heard the term, it's like step family or whatever. So I came into our marriage with kids. Uh, she came into the marriage with no kids, but our own, but me and her had a kid. So we're going to talk about that. We miss you too, Leah. Hey, and so we're going to talk about blended families here in a little bit. We're also going to talk about, uh, let's see, NBA talk. We're going to talk about the different things going on around the NBA. And we're also going to talk about the new edition movie because we did watch three parts it was and good. was thoroughly entertained. So we're going to talk about those three things today. So make sure you just, you sit back and you share this with a friend. Let other people know because we're going to figure this out. We're going to figure it out together, all right? Yep. So, blended family, the reason why I felt like this is a good topic is because, one, I saw a meme. And the meme, it said, uh, some, it was like something to the nature of like where it was like how step-parents whoop their kids or whatever. And it was a weird little thing. So, I said, okay, that would be an excellent topic because when you're a, if you're a step-parent, I don't know. I have no clue. Let no me, clue. Let me first by say, say, start by saying this because you and Marshawn have pointed this out to me, which is... <laughs> And I, should I not have used our government? <laughs> my, or you and my ex-wife have, have pointed this out to me. Correct. I'm just going to call her out by name. But you have said that I don't, I have no clue what it's like to be a step-parent. She's a step-parent. No. You're a step-parent. I have no clue because I don't have step-kids and don't ever intend on having any. Uh, I do believe that you guys are made up of something special. So from a, uh, just, you know, Eric is a good stepfather. Uh, excellent. excellent stepfather yeah. uh, to my to to our kids, um, and you are an excellent stepmother to to our kids, and uh, even just throwing it in, you know, to that other side of the family, uh, my ex wife is an excellent step stepmother as well. Right. So I, all three of you have a unique experience that I actually just cannot match. Right. In any way, shape, form, or fashion. So, uh, what is it like for you to be a step parent? Um. Being a step parent is very rewarding in most cases. In some cases, it gets sketchy because you never want to treat your own biological child um, better than or show favoritism towards your child um, and have this division between the step kids and the biological kid. And that is always my big concern. I always try to make sure that I. What I do for the biological, I do for the step kids, and I hate I hate the word step. Yeah, we I don't really use do. it around here at we all. We don't really use it, but when my you know my kids when they introduce me, they say this is my step mom, and sometimes it's like ugh, because I just feel like I love them all the same. I try to try my best, I try my hardest to keep it all fair at all times, and so sometimes it could be it could be a little sketchy because I always want to make sure that I'm. What, treating them all the same. What was it? What was it like the first time you had to whoop one of one of the uh, one of the kids? That hasn't happened too often, thankfully, because I have real, and I mean it. I have the best stepchildren. I don't have any problems with them as far as saying things like "You ain't my mama" or "You can't tell me what to do." And I've heard the horror stories, so I'm very very blessed in that way. But the first time that I had to spank the stepkids, and I think I was still pregnant with Brayden and they got in trouble yeah. and I had to you know spank them and they still loved me afterwards it was like um you know I but it was it was really it was really odd I didn't like it so what about like so do you feel like do you feel any type of pressure like from a standpoint that you nest like that you have to um 
do you feel pressure that you have to be nice sometimes or overly nice? Do you feel like as a step parent, you have to compensate for the fact that you are not the biological parent? When you say compensate, what do you mean? Like just, I, I don't know any other way. I mean, like, do you feel like that's something you have to do? Um, sometimes because I, I don't want them. I, you know, I always want them to feel extra love, you know, and I know they get it double because they got, you know, two parents on each side, but, um, I always try to do my part. Yeah. So what about, um, what about from my standpoint, like how, fu or how frustrated is it frustrating for you sometimes when I can't understand what it's like to be a step parent? It's very frustrating. <laughs> no, I mean, like, yeah, that's why I asked the question. Yeah, tell me. It, it, it could be very frustrating because you don't, you don't have that. You don't know what it's like to um, have to keep a fine line between, uh, you know, showing favoritism. That's yeah. really what it boils down to because you could say something the wrong way and the kids are like, well, you don't do that with Braden or, you know. Yeah. And it's like, no, I try to treat y'all all the same. But the thing is this. There is a very fine line, and what? I have to be I have to be very careful of that because I don't want for the kids down the line, you know, years later to say, well, she always did treat Braden better than us anyway. What about what about the times when that actually happens though? Like what what you know what I'm saying? Because we all fail at things. We try our best to do it, but how do you feel when you recognize that you've actually done it? Like you've actually, for all the efforts mm -hmm. in the world, you look up and you say, "Crap, I kind of did." show favoritism there. yeah um it's it's hard because you you know you do have a different as much as i hate to say it there is a different kind of love when it comes to the the child that has come from you but i, I really try to squash that i really do yeah. but when it happens um it's, you're right. I try to overcompensate. Yeah. You know what I mean? I try to do something extra special. I try to say, hey, let me just go spend some time with one kid individually or right. something like that. Or when the girls get here because we don't see them, uh, you know, on an everyday basis. Hey, she I try to do something. Amber, uh, man. Hey, y'all. I try to do something um, extra with them, you know, think, to spend some extra time with them. I think it's okay for us. And once again, not a step parent, so I can't speak on it. But I do feel like it's healthy. And it's okay for you to be able to admit that it happens sometimes. Yeah. And to recognize it's not the worst thing in the world because people deal with this all the time. Your children, you know, like that child is not your biological child. And sometimes you may miss the mark on it. And when you do, it's, you know, I think that's what makes it worse. Is like when our pride gets involved and then we right. say, nah, I do do it. I, you know, I, I do it perfectly every time. Yeah. It's like, no. No, we, we don't. I, don't, I don't do it perfectly I, every time. But I, I really do put my best foot forward and yeah. try my best, you know. I think as a parent in general, I, it's hard sometimes not to even show favoritism. Mm -hmm. Like all four in certain areas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, all four of my kids... Well, I can imagine I, because, you know, the girls aren't here. So it's like oh, yeah. when, they, when come, they come, yeah. they get the world. <laughs> exactly. I'm not even worried about, like, what, what the boys think. I'm going to show them some favoritism. Yeah. And if one of the boys have been out on a trip or something like that, same thing. You know, it's the, I don't know, it's the same thing. I do the exact same thing. So I think it, it it's one of those things where you definitely have to uh, just be honest with yourself and what you're doing. Every parent, I'm not going to go as far as to say every parent has a favorite hey, child. Or, you know, that every parent has a favorite child. Because some, you know, I'm not going to say that. Yeah. But there are moments and there are certain things where you think, because these are little humans. Yeah. And you prefer, you know, like, I think some of the problems that parents have run across, we run across as parents, is we, we don't want to admit that we may not like certain You're things. Sweating. You need yeah, to I am sweating because that light is right there. There you go. That's <laughs> wet, too. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> but I don't know. So, like, when it comes to blended family, what advice would you give someone who's about to get married, or someone who is who's in courtship and they're trying to, uh, they're gonna start a blended family? What What would you tell them? What What would be important? My thing would be for you to sit down and make sure that your parenting styles are the same, that everybody agrees. I think that's one thing that I can say for our entire family is that. Everybody is on the same parent. You're talking page. all four yes, parents. Yes, I'm yeah. talking all four parents. I think it's great for you to all sit in a room and be civil. And then, you know, another thing is never talk bad about the 
the, the other parents and vice versa to the kids. I never discuss yeah. anything. You know what I mean? Keep kids, kids out of grown folks' business. Absolutely. We don't do, like that's something this generation just seems to not have down. Like we they allow don't. kids, we'll have a grown up conversation in front of the kids. And kid. kids are, you know, be just yeah. sitting right there. Hey, Marshawn. We were just talking about you. Yeah, we were. A lot. But it's good stuff. Yeah, we, yeah. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's one of the, the key factors is the three, the four of us get along fairly well. Now. Yeah. Now. And I think we've always had, we've always been civil because we all love our children. Right. But I think that's the key factor is that you got to make, want to make an effort. And Yeah, I think it's about being mature. You know what I mean? I think it's, it's truly about being mature and saying, hey, I'll put aside my differences and we're going to focus on raising these kids to be the best, you know, people that they can be. You know what I mean? So it's very, very important, I think, that everybody gets in a room yeah. and sits down and, and have conversations with one for, another. Become, for example, Marshawn wants our kids to wash their neck. So every <laughs> single time I see him, like I'll tell Navon, like if I'm threatening him, I'm like, hey boy, I'm gonna tell your mama you ain't been washing your neck. Right. And that actually works. It does. <laughs> because that is his it fear works. in life. It to works. find out that his mama knows he ain't been washing his neck. Right. He ain't been washing his neck lately. <laughs> I'm just telling you that now, Marshawn. He ain't been washing <laughs> his neck. Alright, so I think that's I mean when it comes to it, for me, I'm in agreement, like if I had to give advice to a man who was who was going into that Regardless of what end of the stick it is, whether you have your kids you're bringing into the relationship or whether right. she has her children, you need to make up in your mind that the word step doesn't exist. Right. Like you have to have it determined that these are my children. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that like when it comes to me and Eric, I don't know if he uses the term step or mm -hmm. not. But I know from my standpoint, I'm not offended if he doesn't. Like right. as a father, I'm OK with him fathering my my children yeah because like he, he, he's it's great his house. Man. He's, and, he, and, and he does a great job and you know he loves the kids right. just just as he loves his own son you know so yeah those are the those are things you got to predetermine do you love these children the same way that you love you or do you love them on a level where you want to love them just as much as you love your right. children we fail at that sometimes but you want to at least have some a desire in you to say hey I want to love these kids just as much right. as, as my natural, you know, children. Right. So uh, I think that's a big that's a big factor right there to make sure that absolutely you can keep a, a family blended. We good on this one. We good. I think we we're gonna hit on this topic again because blended families is, is a big thing um, that a lot of individuals deal with. Uh, I mean, you know, y'all put some questions in the comment yeah. section if you have, you know thoughts about it or if we can answer some questions as far because we've been at this for a while yeah. um so. i think and you know what's funny that's not a you know like in today's society people don't like that like they don't like romance you know what I mean it's one of those things where it's like okay should there be blended families ideally no but you know what let's talk about it and let's be realistic mm -hmm. you know let's be really realistic about the fact that they do exist and we've got to help each other overcome them you right. know and, and have healthy positive relationships um, if there's something unhealthy about your, listen to your children. Yeah. If your children don't feel safe around a potential boyfriend or girlfriend or something like that, listen to that. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying let it be something you that have stops. To be, it, you, you do have to be careful though, because sometimes kids can be manipulative. That, yeah. Now, you know what I'm see, saying? So you have to be, I mean, it, yeah. it, it's a fine line. You have to be very careful. Because um, they want you back with your daddy. Right. That's, that's like, yeah, that, they they want you and they want mom and daddy back together, right. and they will throw a fit, and they will do yeah. everything to say, you know, Miss Such and Such beat me when you weren't around yeah. or something like that. And so you got to be able to decipher what's truth, and when your little precious angel is being manipulated, yeah. Because I had, yeah, at one point, and I know I see, I absolutely love Niara. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she can do absolutely no wrong to for me. Right. Like she is just the sunshine of my life. But I'd had, uh, and she knew I, I was in a relationship with a woman I probably shouldn't have been in. And the era went out of her way to let me know that that lady was the evil, most evil person really? in the world, and was only. And here's the thing. Niara had it in her mind, and I was I, at that time. Me and you was broke up, so she had in her mind we was either going. I was only either going to be with you. And, that's, and and I don't think she thought her mama, you know what I'm saying? It was okay. like, I think it was like, I'm going to find a way that either daddy going to be alone or he going to be, he going to oh, be with Miss Regina. Wow. And she was very manipulative. And I think, 
And, you know, I had the blinders on. I had the racehorse blinders on. I was like, no, not my baby. You a liar, lady. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, and I didn't want to believe it. But then I looked back at it and I was like, man, she played me. She put a quarter in me. Like, I straight <laughs> up got played. So, all right. So that's that's our blended family talk. All right. And, hey, what's up, Mr. Uh, what's up, the boss? Uh, we also, we also got to have a conversation about this, this movie. Now, I'm obviously going to end up talking about this on the Barbershop 918 with okay. the fellas. Right. So I ain't going to go too deep into it, but just about everybody. Uh, hey, Jade. Hi, Jade. Um, it, you know, everybody, just, not I'm going to say everybody, but up and down my Facebook news feed, a lot of people watch the new edition movie. Right. I know you watched it. I watched it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was it was one of those things where it, it had it was something relevant to us. In the sense that it was sort of like when I was growing up, they had movies on about the Beatles or the Beach Boys right. and stuff like that. So it was like our generation's first time having a movie. Because as a matter of fact, when it was little, Jackson 5 movie came on television. Yes. And yeah. so um, this movie came on and it and it was it, it kept my interest. Where I, like a lot of times I'll turn and be like, yeah. But it was real funny, man. Like I mean, hey, it had Gary. Its, not funny, but it had its good parts. What was your favorite parts of, of, of it? Uh, I think my favorite part was really getting to know who they were um, as far as a group and all the struggles that they went through because you know being young so like you know in 88 I was only eight right so I didn't know all of the details and the fact that they weren't making hardly any money at all right and that they were struggling to you know still living in the projects and you know doing all these tours and all of this stuff but then coming back to the to the projects it just was beyond me and the, the craziest part i thought was when the guy offered the check for a dollar 87 to be split amongst <laughs> all the members i'm like are you who even does that like how could you how yeah i would i mean i wouldn't even feel comfortable coming to somebody with a dollar 87 after you know they've truly made millions you know they had had yeah. platinum records all this stuff so. i think that's is i'm glad that they made the movie just based off the fact that it's like kids need to see that that's the reality of the record industry some things have right. changed since then and most people are, are entrepreneurs and they, they understand that they have to sign themselves and do other things but it's still you know they're still going to find ways to to throw shade like that so Sharon says she loved the movie. What's that say? Her, Willard, and Vina watched it together, so it took us all the way back. I yeah. bet. And yeah. see, with me not being that old, um, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got to throw an old joke every now and then. All right. So, but not. I, and then I got, okay, I made a comment during the Barbershop 918 because we had this debate about the greatest R&B group of all times or whatever. Right. And the reason why I discredited uh, New Edition was because I said, hey. What's up, J-Rock? Um. I discredited them basically just based off the fact that I said their music wasn't timeless. I made this comment, and Jesse posted right away to the Barbershop uh, uh, Facebook right away that their music is not timeless. I mean, they, like, I can't believe I'm saying it. Like, he couldn't believe I was saying that. Mm -hmm. And I got to give the justification for me saying that their music wasn't timeless is because when my kids listen to, listen to their music, they're not like, hey... It, yeah. it sounds like it was made in the 80s. But, it's not timeless. But Brayden was like, when they did, you know, Can You Stand the Rain? and Because right. they did the That's whole That's their only song. timeless song. Brayden was like, man, I like that song. Yeah, yeah. me too, ain't Sharon. I was Ricky really Bell was surprised. doing drugs like that, yeah. It and, was, he, and he looked like Sammy Davis Jr. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on. The dude who played it did <laughs> he, look like him. He did. But yeah. I was very surprised that he was on drugs. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know what, that. What was, so those were your favorite. My favorite part of the movie, and I hate to admit it. <laughs> was what? <laughs> my favorite part of the movie, it was two part. One, when he busted up in the, uh, <laughs> when he busted in the uh, the record uh, thing. You know, like when he busted up in there and he was trying to get some answers as to what that little. Yes. <laughs> and what the dude called him. Man, I was like, whoa. He's like, don't come here like you running something. Little, <laughs> little Daddy is a smart kid. <laughs> and then my other favorite part was uh my other favorite part was when the mama was on the phone and somebody was asking for a dollar and she was like, Can't you see I'm on this phone? phone? Yeah. But did you but, did you see what Gary said? Gary but, was like, um, it was better than the Jackson Five movie, and, The Temptations and, and the Heartbeats. I don't now, know about I don't the, know heartbeats. the Heartbeats. 
Ain't nothing yeah, better yeah. than the five heartbeats <laughs> when it comes to those type of motor right. picks. You know, no one can really pinpoint, like, the five heartbeats is about two different groups, like a combination or whatever, yeah. but it definitely ain't better than the five heartbeats. No. Ain't nothing better than the five heartbeats. No, Gary, you wrong on that. I can't think of one. But I agree that the Jackson 5 and the Temptations, yeah, you right about those It two. was a three-part. So I'm yeah. interested in, like, trying to watch it all together. But, yeah, so that's our review on that. Yeah, that was good. All right, so it's time for us to get into our. our I'm sweating bad. Yeah, like I'm sweating like not, LV okay. on that. Uh, on <laughs> the Gangsta's you, Paradise. Let me get you video. something. I don't know what. To oh do. man, so <laughs> <laughs> it's time for us to talk about the NBA. I say Thunder Talk by accident because that's what I do on the Barbershop Nine One Eight, but it's actually just NBA talk. And so here's what's been going on around the NBA that I'm interested in asking about. So we got LeBron made his statement about we need to bring in. More some playmakers. some more playmakers. Mm -hmm. Tristan Top uh, Thompson actually uh, he actually came in and said, "What did Tr uh, he he actually said? You got to work with what we have, yes. right?" So then you go over to Chicago and you got D Wade making comments of the nature of just saying like, you know, everybody's Thank you, got Marshawn. everyone's got to hey, play. Sheik. Everyone's got that's all right. <laughs> everyone's got to play hard, right? Right. And so. Um, you know, and then Rondo came out. Butler said something, and Rondo came out. So how do you feel about these players kind of beefing through the media or saying things to each other about their team? Shouldn't that be in the locker room? I think so. I don't think that, you know, we should be privy to that information. I think it's childish, to be honest with you. How you going to come out like you, you know, trying to blast the person? It's like, go talk to them. Right. Go so in the room, y'all call a, a team meeting, and squash whatever y'all got going on. You think the NBA is softer now because of, of guys Ash. like used to that Twitter life? You know, like they talk stuff through the media and everything. Do you think this is making a softer NBA because people communicate that way? Or like, what do you think? I mean, I think it's just like text messages. You know, sometimes I feel like a text message is so inappropriate when you're trying to talk to... When you yeah. need to talk to somebody and ask them something serious. You know yeah. what I mean? So... I think it's the same thing with them using the media. I mean, you know, the social media to to get out their issues. It, Twitter finger thugs. <laughs> I agree, man. I don't I don't like that. I think it's it it, it does nothing for it. I think it just causes more tension. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think it just causes more tension. Hey Eric. What's up, Eric? So I think that I think that's the, the key thing for me is like I do think that it's soft. I yeah. don't I don't like that going back and forth. I don't know how much it affects the product. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's on the floor, but it does make me not invest. Um, it does make me not want to invest into the team. Right. You know, like into watching them because it's like, this new product just ain't, ain't right for me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I want them to be a more cohesive. I mean, now, what went down in Chicago was like crazy. The fact that Rondo stood up and said, my vets don't do this. My vets, <laughs> soft like Charm. <laughs> You know, and it's like when you think about it, his bets probably did do that, but we ain't gonna go back and think about it because I don't know. I mean, you know, I don't remember what what was going on back then. Right. Thunderwise, Cantor is out for two months. Are we gonna play soft Man, in that, Oklahoma City? When I tell you that was the stupidest thing you he could have done, punching the chair. And now you have a broke form. But he on Twitter, I, though. He was on Twitter all day yesterday during the game. So how? Like, he broke his, I don't know, but he didn't break his Twitter finger. He's, <laughs> he's on, he's sitting on there just going at it. I am angry about it. What, what was he, he talking about? It was just, it was just different things. But here, here's my, here's my whole thing. Anthony, okay, we're the worst three point and shoot, uh, three point shooting team in the league. Right. Anthony Morrow is one of the best three point shooters right. out there. Why not give him some some time? Why why was Singler in the game yesterday? I don't know, but I was talking uh, talking to the guy at my uh, job. We we talked Thunder Talk all the time, right? And what I pointed out to him was, I think Billy Donovan needs to look at his players. Jeremy Grant should be in the game. He should be starting. Yeah. He has a lot more hustle and more consistency than Sabonis. Ooh, Period. I forgot to tell you, Jeremy Grant and Oladipo going to be at Bob Mills Furniture on Thursday. What? <laughs> yeah, I just saw it. I heard that on the radio. That's here in Tulsa? Yeah. I just thought I'd throw that out there, 71st and Garnett. <laughs> Not that they, we just got paid for that. <laughs> that just seemed like something you would go to. <laughs> 
I just thought I'd throw that. I'm out good. But <laughs> but it just seemed like you would though. Like cause you you love the thunder that much where you would go out I there do. and get something signed or something. I, I do. Or love you the would thunder. go out there and, and, and voice your opinion to Ola Depot. Like you need to get your three point game together, you know. So reminds me of when Amari Stoudemire did the same in New York. That's what yeah. Sheik said. Yeah. yeah absolutely. It is. So we got trade deadline coming up. Can't right. <laughs> Captain Random Drew, exactly. <laughs> that yeah, that is me. <laughs> it's ADD. That's actually what it is <laughs> at its worst. Yes. So we got uh let's see, we got the trade deadline coming up, and we've all we don't have enough talent to trade away. Like and there's no pieces that people are interested in. We can't get rid of anyone. So it seems like this we just need to accept that this is our team. Yeah. I think that's it. We just I don't know what it's gonna look like. I, I mean, I don't. I really don't know going forward because Westbrook had an off night last night, and yet and still got a triple double. Still got a triple double, but he needs. He actually needs playmakers. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's like, who's gonna help him out? Because he could feed the ball to. Um, he could be out of the game, and Cantor would be on the floor. You know what I mean? And that would give us more points off the bench and all of that. So it's like. What are we going to do now? I have no clue. Yeah. All right. Anything else going on around the NBA you want to talk about? All-star snubs. Carmelo is not going. He don't I'm need to go. I'm okay with that. Carmelo doesn't I need think to go. Lamarcus D-Wade all, didn't need to go. No. Yeah, I think they just went down through the years just because it was like they're popular. Yeah. So I'm actually glad to see that they didn't go. Uh, I think only person that probably should have went was Aldridge. Uh, Sheik said, have you heard rumors of Melo joining? The Thunder? I saw We that. don't have the package. I mean, what can we package for him? We well, how do you feel about that, Sheik? I don't want Melo. I think, I think if anything, he can hit a three better than any. I mean, like, not Morrow, but he can hit a three better than anybody we have. But you, ESPN posted Griffin for cancer today. No. Nah. That's not a good package either. Cause that, he, that, he keeps getting hurt. He just is fragile. <laughs> I think Oklahomans would Boy, love Lord Lando him. is trying to bring back Perk. <laughs> we'll take because of the man. I, I would. <laughs> take Perk. I would take Perk. He's missing layups. But still. He's whack, but he can score. Yeah. Yeah, he just is not consistent anymore. Yeah. It's, I don't. I think we just need to cut our losses. We're going to stumble into the playoffs. I don't think. I agree. Not. Eric, I agree. Yeah. Oh, Melo is the number one overrated uh, NBA player. I've never seen what it is about his game that makes people go crazy. And I don't you, like his game at all. I was I really irritated have. that he went to the um, Olympics. Yeah. Every like, year, he's always been I, consistently. I no, I've, I've never. But it's been a New a York thing. thing. I think. Yeah. No, I, I do feel like Melo has always been one of the more overrated. Uh, like when he came out, I think he was drafted appropriately. You know what I'm saying? Like in the spot that he was, it, he's he's who he is. Yeah, but can, I'm just saying, what are we gonna do right now, though? She because Cantor's out for two months. Yeah, he's so not what are we gonna do anymore? You know. Yeah. All right, so that's the show. That's a show for today. We talked the NBA. We talked blended families. If you just joined and you uh, we talked new edition. Yeah, if you just joined, make sure you check out the blended families part that we just uh, that we talked about earlier. Um, like I said, share it with people, man. People that you know that may have a blended family or about to have one. Make right. sure you share that, uh, and we want to add to it. You know, like um, we definitely want to talk because that's that's an interesting thing, man. Like um, for people to go over, so. He's a great player, but he can't make his teammates better. Yeah. No, yeah. Melo can't make his teammates better. No. It's all about Melo, and he's never been able to do that. Denver, he wasn't able to do it. And, like, he has a one-dimensional game, which really means that he needs to be able to take advantage of. I've never seen him have a good game against another dominant player. Right. So when they're playing, like, mid-level teams, yeah, he, he can have a night where he goes off. But yeah. he can't deal with real defense. Right. You know, at all. We'll keep going if I don't if I don't stop. Yeah. So is that it? Yeah, that's it. We covered all three topics that we we said we was gonna set out to. Cover. Man, that went by fast. Yeah, I told you we should have picked up a fourth topic today. I didn't tell you that. I'm just. <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> what you didn't say that. <laughs> nah, I, I, I think we've thrown it all in there. So. Yeah. All right. All right. You gotta hit the finish button. Next week, same time. You, Next Monday. You're just gonna avoid. What. Avoid what? The question. What What was the question? Come on, man. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. So last week, and a lot of, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. 
And we really will finish this. So, like, last <laughs> week, there was a question and ask of me at the end of the show. And it was, uh, it was, why am I smelly, like, when I'm in front of this? And then, like, if, when they see me at church, I might be different. And, you know, my guys at work may ask the same question. I think by, vo like, at, it sounds awkward to say that I'm a pastor by vocation, but um, it's possible for individuals. Like, this is what I do, that, and it helps me. Um, it kind of helps me show you a different side of me. Um, oftentimes, and I'm not trying to justify a lot of times I'm not necessarily thinking in the mind frame of, like, hey, I'm trying to make people think that, you know, or be mad at me. A lot of times I'm walking to the destination I'm going to and I'm praying and I'm thinking, but I'm not really thinking about it. So um, my natural look has always been one that people will assume is angry or it's the typical, you know, look at them. That's, that's the way, you know, like it, that's not what's in, in my heart or in my mind. Or else right. I wouldn't be a pastor. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't yeah. be dead. You know, my whole life is dedicated to serving others. And definitely if I was angry, um, I definitely wouldn't, it wouldn't be, you know, wouldn't be right. okay. So, um, for the most part, and I'm not saying this in a, it sounds facetious, but I'm really not saying this in that, in that type of way, but I really am. A, I, I recognize that I am a loving person. Um, I do recognize that Christ has, has, has built me that way. So, hey, um, Audrey. so I'm not necessarily, she missed all the thunder talk and everything. She did. And I know she got some good stuff to add to it. So, uh, man, yeah, this whole show you, you might've liked. So go back and uh, look at it, Audrey. But yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at. Um, that's kind of where, where I'm at with answering that question. And honestly, just approach me if you want to know what's going on with me. There you that, go. That's always, is that, is that a good answer? I think so. All right. I forgot. Thank you for reminding me. If you got any questions, we'll always answer them later. All right. All right. That's the show. That's the show. Y'all tune in next week for We Gonna Figure It Out. Yeah. And, uh... I'm going to put it on YouTube, too. So, all right. Um, all right.